Hi, this is Eric Stark with Radio Arizona RV. Today's episode is number 54, so I want to welcome you to the show. And also today on the show, we have a special guest from Clear 2O, Keith Bernard. He's the owner of Clear2O.com. So Clear2O makes water filters for RVs, and they've delved into this water filter system, and they seem to have it really figured out, not only for RV use, but also for residential applications. So we'll get to that interview in just a moment. But before we talk to Keith, I want to remind you, if I haven't done so, to check out our website, sunpromfg.com. You know, everybody knows, I think they know, that we make slide out awning fabrics well i've just reduced the prices of our 13 ounce material so you get a 13 ounce fabric with a three-year warranty and we've dropped the prices about 30 percent across the board on the 13 ounce fabric so if you're looking for an economical fabric with a great warranty you know three years and you're going to get much more life out of that you know you're going to get at least seven years of life out of it so check it out at sunpromfg.com so this is three year slide out awning fabrics and of course we have fabrics with a five-year and 10-year warranty as well so as I said earlier, we have Keith Bernard on the show today from Clear 2O Water Filtration. And Keith has been in the water filtration business for about 11 years. And he's working hard at Clear 2O. He is the owner, by the way, but he's working hard there to find new products and new technologies for better filtration. The water quality today that we see in RV parks is lacking, or if you're in an RV park, maybe it's on a... Uh, well, city water, it doesn't seem to matter. There's always something in the water that needs to be filtered out. In some cases, it's worse than others. So, hi, Keith. Welcome to the show today. Uh, Eric, thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure having you. So, again, that's Keith Bernard from Clear 2O. And the website is clear2o.com. So, if you, you, know, you can go there and check out what they have. And not only do they have RV products, they have products for uh, residential use as well. So they're in the water filtration game. They're not just finding a little niche in the the RV market, if you will. So, Keith, we're going to go through some questions here that, um, you know, I hear quite often from my customers and things that run through my mind about water filtration. You know, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, you know, I'm from Arizona where water's, you know, a tremendous problem. You know, everything needs to be filtered there. But other parts of the country, it's not so obvious. You know, after talking to you a little bit prior to the show, it seems like there's water filtration <clears throat> issues everywhere that, you know, water just needs to be filtered. And that's what your company does. And you seem to have a, a love for that, a passion for it, which I appreciate. And I know my listeners do as well because they're drinking this stuff. When it comes to the RV, why is clean water so important to have it running through your RV? You're asking that question to a water filtration guy. So <laughs> as you can guess, uh, we think everybody wants clean water and no matter where you are, but, um, you may have good water at home, but on the road, your water is going to come from multiple sources as you travel. So as you already mentioned, it could be city water. It could be a well water. It could be from, uh, different types of things. So uh, maybe not all as clean as you may prefer for many people. This means hauling bottled water as their primary drinking source. Bottled water's got its own issues, including cost and inconvenience, aside from the environmental issues associated with it. A good water filter system can actually provide you with both uh, peace of mind and better tasting water for all your water needs. So we really recommend that you uh, really look into what your water is for your RV and, and how you want that. Now, in addition to that, your RV is going to be happier because clean water is going to be better for, better for all your onboard systems. So like your pipes and your fixtures, uh, even your water heater that can become clogged due to the buildup of sediments or particulates in your water. So it's best to keep them out of your system altogether and by filtering your water. Okay, that makes perfect sense. So it's just basically clean, keep the entire system clean so that water you're bringing in is good for you as well, not just your RV. So that makes sense. And you mentioned bottled water too. And I think we're going to get to that where bottled water won't be a necessity anymore with your filtration systems. Is that correct? That's what we hope. All right, perfect. So now I know that your company sells countertop filters, inline filters, water pitchers that filter the water. So what are the pros and cons of each type of, of those filters? One of the, the best things about water filtration is there's numerous uh, types of water filtration uh, out in the marketplace. So that are already available and you can tailor them to your specific need. So you don't have to buy bottled water to solve your water issues. That doesn't have to be your only solution. And you can avoid the, the cost and the hassle and, and start filtering by one of these methods. By far, one of the easiest is to 
use a filtered water pitcher. So these are widely available. You can get them at uh, many, many, many stores or online or a countertop type of system uh, for your drinking water use. So you can save money and there's really nothing to install with these types of systems. So you just have to make sure that you find a really good filter and uh, one that will filter out contaminants like heavy metals, uh, lead and mercury, volatile organic compounds, et cetera. So make sure you buy a good quality type of system that is going to be able to allow you to have good drinking water. Uh, and then, then you can eliminate having to haul that bottled water with you all the time. Now, if you want to filter all the water in your RV, uh, you can actually easily purchase an inline filter. And this is one that is going to attach between the water hose and your RV and the campground water spigot. So it's uh, just an inline filter that is going to filter all the water coming in to your coach. So this is going to now protect your coach over all the systems, but also give you better quality water for your showering and for rinsing and even for drinking. The inline filter is a entry level type of filtration. It's widely available, easy to, to use, and it's gonna provide you with all the benefits of the filtered water but nothing, again, to really install, and it's very easy to use. Um, now, if you are more of a serious or a longer-term uh, RVer, there are onboard systems that are installed and provide even better performance of water flow, life of the filters, et cetera. So it really depends on what you need and how you use your RV. The key thing is, is that there are multiple different types of filtration out there, and you first need to determine how do you plan to use that water? Okay, that makes sense. So it's kind of how your RV lifestyle is. That's going to dictate how you're going to want to probably filter your water. Does that sound right? That's exactly right. Okay. It's uh, quite often uh, based on uh, how often they're using their RV and, and how much water they're actually using. Okay, so that kind of leads us into the other thought I had here about, you know, replacing water filters. You know, I hear and read, you know, six months, three months, and some manufacturers say, well, it depends on your usage, but we recommend every six months. <laughs> some might recommend less. How does the RVer really decide how often they should replace their filter? That's a great question. You do need to be aware of in getting involved in a system that can give you feedback on that, or you need to be able to measure the amount of water that's flowing through. An easy way to do it is just to take note of your flow rate that actually is going to occur. If you're using a water pitcher, as an example, many have flow meters, or countertop systems have flow meters that can actually be able to tell you that. But for onboard systems, you do need some way of being able to do that. Your water flow is going to be the, the primary indicator, and, and we're also going to offer a system that's going to give you some additional ways to be able to do that. You know, the, the other aspect of it is is that how people decide which type of system is going to be better for them, and that's going to be different for every individual. Most decide based on their quality of water that they're looking for or the quantity of water that they're looking for. And there's different systems to fit their different needs, uh, each one with different filter capacities and flow rates. And of course, each one of those is going to come at a different time frame for being able to replace. It's just best to figure out how long you're going to use your RV and then buy a system that is going to be fitting against that. Okay, that that makes sense. And your dual canister system, I think, will help us with that. To you know, to, to, um, determining when to replace the filter. We'll get that in a moment, though. But now your inline filter, it's when someone buys that and they use it for the first time. Maybe they use it for a couple of days. Then they park their RV for three months, but they've drained the filter and you know they dry it the best they can. Is that three months while it's not being used? Is that time stacking up against the life of the filter? No, it's it's really not. And and when you find that from some different uh, filter manufacturers, they're just basically wanting to sell you more filters. In this case, we really recommend that if you use your filter during a small time, you use the keywords dry your filter. So we want you to shake out any excess water leave the caps off and allow it to dry fully. And as long as it's dried fully, you can put the caps on. That just protects from dirt or debris from getting in the filter itself. 
And that filter can sit there as long as it's out of the sun, you know, it's in a reasonably cool and dry place, can sit there for quite a long period of time and be able to be used for your next trip. Or if you use it partly that season, you can maybe even start using that into the next season as well. That filter is going to be good until it uh, becomes uh, clogged, which all filters become clogged at some point in time. That's their job. Their job is to catch things passing through. So you do want to see a filter clog um, over time because that does tell you that it has reached its performance life. Okay. So that'll slow down the water pressure inside the RV, which would become very obvious to most people, I would believe. Exactly right. Two questions about storing a filter. Now, can they just set the filter on end without the caps in it and let it just drain out and dry out that way? That wouldn't be a problem, would it? No, that's actually perfectly fine as long as the water has a way to escape. Um, So if you you were to put it so that the water is uh, able to actually leave. Our recommendation is always to be able to put it towards the outlet side Mm -hmm. facing down so that the water can actually drain through and and pass out. Right. But uh, if not, the best way to do it is shake it out. Once you've shaken all the, the water out, generally you're just letting the remaining filter dry. And that can be done by just putting it on end. Okay. And so putting it on the right end is important because the filter has a direction of flow to it. Correct. Okay. Now, another thing just popped in my mind about storage. Could someone just take the water filter, put it in a Ziploc bag, and throw it in their refrigerator until they use it again? Well, that is a possibility as well, and we do have people that do those types of things. Uh, the good part about putting it into the refrigerator is, is being the low uh, temperature, there's no microbial issues uh, that could be, but you don't have those either if you dry your filter fully. Okay. Um, depending on whether or not you want to store it in your RV, or you can also store it in your refrigerator in a plastic bag. That works fine as well. Okay. The drying is probably easier for most people than they can put it back in their RV and they, they have it the next trip. Put That's it correct. The drying is the key portion. Right. That's right. Otherwise it stays in the refrigerator until you get to where you're going and, oh yeah, it's in the refrigerator at home. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Gotta go buy a new That's one, right. <laughs> which is okay for the store that sells you one, but not good for your <laughs> pocketbook. Your systems use solid block carbon where most of the systems out there that I've seen for RVs use granulated carbon. What's the difference? Well, we love solid carbon block because it provides a tremendous surface area in which we can absorb and bond with the different contaminants. Um, And as well, it's got a solid wall uh, to block the particulates from entering your water and can have a very low micron rating. So just to give your listeners, if they don't know micron, a micron is a millionth of a meter. So very, very, very small, very tiny uh, level of rating. The lower rating, the better. So if it's a high micron, it's going to have... uh, more contaminants pass through. If it's a low micron, it's going to have fewer contaminants be able to pass through. Uh, and I'll give you an example. Uh, human hair is anywhere from 35 to 70 microns, but quite often granulated carbon filters are at 100 microns. So in theory, uh, human hair could pass through. So it's really not filtering that much if you can put something that large through that filter. We find that uh, solid carbon block is basically the best all around technology for water filtration because it does the absorption that we're looking for, the chemical bonding that we're looking for, as well as the mechanical blocking of uh, particulates that come through. And if you compare it to granulated activated carbon, which is actually the most common type, it's also quite often the, the cheaper opportunity and it just really doesn't perform as well. Example that granulated carbon is made from small granules of carbon and those are then loosely packed into a filter. Sometimes you can shake the filter and if you hear them moving around inside then generally that's a, a GAC or a granulated activated carbon filter. When the water flows through it, it seeks a path of least resistance. And so quite often that is by going around the granules as opposed to through the granules. That water that's going around is not necessarily being filtered. It can't produce the same results. So I don't want to disparage uh, GAC. It's actually a, a good technology for what it does. It's just that it focuses more on the aesthetic aspects of water like taste and color versus the removal of contaminants. And we really consider those to be the bigger issue we want to be able to get at that. And with solid carbon block, we can focus on all of the aesthetics so we can improve the color, improve the taste, improve the odors, uh, et cetera, but we can also get to the contaminants that are going through. And, uh, often, 
with the, the one micron performance level. So one versus 20 or 100, which is you know vastly different. And with solid carbon block, it's actually compressed into a solid block. So the water actually has to flow through it in order to be able to get through. You don't have that same issue of water flowing around the granule. So it, it can just help it to allow to do its job better and a much higher level of performance. You know, that's probably the best description i've heard of a water filter how it works especially granulated carbon even guys i mean owning an rv store people have come into my store over the years selling products and you ask them you know what's the difference between this and that and granulated activated carbon is pretty popular in the rv uh, or commonly known as gac gac they they just say well it's better than this there's no explanation and you explained it like, especially with the human hair if a human hair can get through there just about anything else can right i mean that's exactly <laughs> that's a big hole <laughs> when you when you're talking <laughs> water yes yeah. granulated activated carbon actually more treats the water than filters the water but generally they call them filters but they really just treat the water the other question that came to my mind was solid block carbon. Does that slow down or reduce the water pressure at all? Well, it can. There is a possibility if it's tightly compressed that you can do it. We try to accomplish that through doing different size particulates through there. So we actually allow small micro channels to come through. We focus on trying to make sure that our solid carbon block has uh, really good flow rates as compared to the granulated activated carbon. That makes sense because a lot of people ask that question about when it comes to water filters, is it going to slow down my pressure or reduce my pressure? You know, that's a big concern because sometimes you go to an RV park and you don't have good pressure to begin with, so they don't really want to reduce it. So the way you describe that, that makes sense. So it's not going to reduce water pressure where it's going to be a major issue for anybody correct? That's right. So it's going to still give you good quality pressure that's coming through. Um, and it is a bit of a trade-off between what you can get for the filtered level as opposed to the granulated carbon. But at the same time, we focus on that to try to make a, a relatively high flow rate. So now another thing, water has good properties in it too, good minerals, if you will. You know, there's good minerals, there's bad minerals in water. Does your filtration system or filters take out all the good stuff as well? Well, yeah, that's a really good question. And it's a bit of a pet peeve of mine, actually. There has been a, a TV commercial for a, a kitchen product, actually, that's uh, been around for running early for the last number of years. And they talk in terms of TDS and that they remove the TDS, which actually stands for total dissolved solid. What they're not telling you is the most common TDS measured is calcium, magnesium, and other beneficial minerals. So those are the most common TDS in your water. And if you were to go take a, a, a bottle of mineral water, as an example, and even expensive mineral water, uh, you're going to find it has a very high TDS. And the reason why is all the minerals that are in the water. But that's not necessarily bad for you. Our filters do not take out the minerals in solution. Those minerals actually pass straight through our filter, and they are not reduced. Overall, we we don't target those. We allow those to pass through. We target more things, again, like the VOCs, which would be, example, uh, atrazine and benzene, uh, things that would come from the gasoline industry. We target things like lead and mercury, um, things from manufacturing sources, things that can get in the water table that you don't want in your glass. Okay, yeah, so you're mentioning a lot of... I think trigger words that people know anything with zine and it's got to be bad, right? Um, <laughs> Generally, yes. You know, <laughs> lead, you know, mercury. So over the years, we've been conditioned to know that that stuff's not good. The bottom line is there's actually a lot of stuff really happening inside of a water filter, even though it's not a mechanical device with moving gears and things, but it's taking out the good or taking out the bad and letting the good stuff go through. It was pretty interesting. You know, you mentioned earlier about filtration systems are going to differ per RV or what their, what their desire is, what they want to do, how often they RV, whether they're a full-timer, you know, a weekend warrior type person. A water system differ based on the size of the RV? Well, it, it could. And, and I would say two things. One, on the size of the RV as well as uh, how that RV is going to be used. In other words, what type of RV are you? So the needs of someone who camps for a few weekends a year is going to differ greatly than someone who spends three, six, or 
you know, even 12 months a year out on the road. And they're going to need to both size and also identify the right type of water filtration that's going to be for those specific types of usages. Usually we recommend this to be based on a learning curve and identifying what they really want. In other words, uh, the quality and the quantity of the water that they need again, is different by weekend as opposed to someone who's in there 24-7 overall. So for the weekender or the short-term RVer, a, a water pitcher, countertop, or we talked about earlier, the inline filter, those types of systems can easily meet their needs for, on a short-term basis, and they can be really more cost-effective for that level of use. But for the longer-term RVer, and this would go from anyone who is out on the road for a consistent period of time all the way into the larger uh, rigs and to the full motor coaches, et cetera, we really recommend larger canister systems, and those can provide higher flow rate, more and more flow rates in line with what your home water system would be like, and longer filter life. You're going to pass a lot more water through it in that regard if you are if you were actually on the road 24-7 than if you are just out there for the weekend. Those, can, those types of systems can be installed. They can be installed systems into their onboard plumbing, or they can also be used outside their coach uh, with their water inlet and still have that level of, of flow coming through. Okay, perfect. So it's not the size of the RV, it's just how often you're using it and what kind of uh, RV lifestyle you have, really. Well, it is. And if you if you do have more people on board that are going to be using more showers, etc., it really comes down to the quantity of water used as opposed to the specific size of the RV. You mentioned earlier that you guys have a dual canister system, and I believe Clear 2 just came out with that, correct? That's correct. Brand new. What are some of the benefits of it? I mean, everybody's most, well, I shouldn't say everybody, most RVers have probably seen a dual canister system in an RV park, or they might have a single canister system, or they've been in a store and they're shopping for a filter, they've probably seen them. So what kind of separates your dual canister system from any other dual canister system out there, whether it's store-bought or someone, you know, makes their own? Well, we first and foremost recognize that the full-time RVer is living in their RV for extended periods, and they need higher flow and increased filter capacity. And even though we love our clear to RV inline filter, it performs great for most people's needs. We recognize that that full-timer really has higher levels of needs. And what we found in talking to a number of RVers is that they wanted some different ways to be able to work because there are a lot of different RVs out there and there are quite often um, RVs that are both larger and smaller and people change their RV. So we wanted really to make a system that was more easy to deal with for the consumer and uh, that can be used and or uh, done in a better different way. So we developed our dual canister system and for the heavier use of a full-time RVer, um, it actually consists of two heavy-duty canisters, and both of these use a 10-inch by 2.5-inch universal filters. We offer those filters, and we'd be very happy if you bought our Clear 2.0 to filters to, to utilize in that. But we also realize that you're out on the road, and uh, that system is a standard system, and you can get those types of filters while you're on the road, or you can, of course, order them online as well. They are universal in nature, and, and you can replace them with uh, what you find. The system has a higher flow rate than the, your normal RV inline filters, so your water pressure is going to be very good because you're going to be working with this to be using it for showers and things of this nature. And we really want that experience to be closer to what you would have at home than what you would have just you know out at your or uh, for a weekend or so. It comes fully assembled and comes in a stand that's powder coated, which is actually designed to be used outdoors. So the the system comes with garden hose filter fittings that are there for installation and allows you to place the unit outside and hook it up directly into the spigot and then into your coach. Or you can actually mount it on board if you have space in a wet bay or a compartment that you can make use uh, available. The nice thing about it is the stand goes all the way to the floor. And in doing so, when you're driving down the road, you don't have that heavy canister bouncing off where it's been screwed into the wall on a bracket. So this stand is going to be able to keep it much, much more stable. And then lastly, one of the features that we place on it as well is we actually have uh, high-quality oil-filled pressure gauges. 
And we put those on the actual unit so you can get a visual understanding of what's going on inside that filter. You know, most of the time when you have filters on RVs, uh, they're in an enclosed system. You really can't tell what's going on with that and if the filter is uh, in good condition or bad condition. Is it nearing its life and should be replaced? You don't really know. And you may have forgotten when's the last time you changed it uh, also. The fact is, is that here you can now actually see the pressure going through the system. If that pressure is increasing, then you realize that that filter is maybe coming to its capacity and it's ending its life at that point in time and should be replaced. The other aspect of it is by having two pressure gauges is it allows you to see both the pre-filter side and the post-carbon filter side. And this allows you to change out that pre-filter more often. That's going to give you longer carbon filter life. You don't have to change both filters at the same time. You pay, basically change them when they need to be changed. It's going to save you money. It's going to save you time. And uh, it's just going to be a, just a better for your overall system. As you mentioned earlier, it's uh, available now on our website, clear2o.com. And eventually it will be available at other online retailers as well. This um, dual cancer system, I think, is the best one I've ever seen. And with the powder-coated stand, the oil filled gauges, and for those of you out there listening, the oil will not leak into the water it's just in the gauge it uh, makes the gauge a more accurate gauge with less fluctuation and protects them for you know bouncing down the road as well but also keith described it pretty well this is a nice system and i've seen these dual canister systems as he mentioned mounted on walls and they do come off over time the screws pull out they break you see them laying outside um, because there's no way to really hook it up People set them in five gallon buckets. So this system, and for two hundred fifty bucks, to me that's a, a no brainer. If you if that's the system you need, because it it will last you as long as you're going to own the RV or longer or into your next RV. You know you're going to keep this thing um, if you don't sell it with the RV. So I think that's a really good addition to your line at clear20.com. That's nice. So now Keith might be considered a small fish in a big pond <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> competition. <laughs> There's a lot of companies out there have been doing this a lot longer than you have. So what kind of makes you, or how are you gaining success in this marketplace? Yeah, you you said at the very beginning, we've been around since 2008. So so we don't feel like we're newcomers, but at the same time, we realize that uh, there are much bigger companies out there than ourselves. And uh, we like to think of ourselves not only as the owners of the company, but also the users of the product. So really our worst enemy in regard to making sure our products work well. We focus on meeting and exceeding our own needs as customers. And this includes our focus on you know better filtration overall. That's really what our goal is, is we really want to make better water and introduce people to better filtration overall. So yes, other larger competitors, they sell much higher volume than we do but they don't always offer the best performance. We're a small family owned and operated business that we feel just tries harder to give you cleaner water. So we'd love to have you as customers. Right. And that makes sense. And, you know, like I said, being in RV industry for, you know, 30 something years now, I've had talked or I've talked to a lot of people about our RV water filtration have come into my store, called me on the phone, sent me stuff and your system, the way you're doing this, your customer service, you know, it just makes sense to me. You're a company that cares about your customer and the water they're drinking. You know, it's not just a way to make money part of your life. And you mentioned earlier that you own an RV. So you understand what the RV is going through out on the road when they're trying to find clean water. It's an impossibility unless you have a good filtration system such as yours. Absolutely. We started out not finding what we wanted in uh, the marketplace. And so therefore we developed it for ourselves. And of course, now we're wanting to make that available for other RVers that are out there. So that's where your success is coming from, you know, keeping focused on what you do and how you do it and your customer support and making a good product. And that's everybody that knows me knows that good products are what I get behind. And, you know, your company has a good product here. So now this is um, a little off topic here. We're not going to be talking about RVs for the next question. You know, in the past, Flint, Michigan was known for their water crisis. Newark, New Jersey was known for their water crisis. How does that kind of relate to the RV industry indirectly? Because, you know, these, you know, people just assume that their water supplier or provider is giving them good water. In some cases they might be, but where can the breakdown in that be, whether it's at the factory or in the pipes going to the house or the RV park? Can you give us a little insight on that? 
Sure, sure, sure. And actually, this is uh, certainly on the minds of many people, I think, right now. Um, I, overall, I like to think that most water treatment facilities are doing their best to identify and address any water quality concerns. And most issues don't rise to the level of Flint or Newark. Um, I don't know if people know or not, but the EPA is the actual agency that sets the guidelines for primary and secondary water standards. So each facility has to follow those by law, and each municipality is actually doing its best to keep your water clean. They have to produce an annual report, and we really recommend people to get that annual report. You know, sometimes you find it on their website at the local city, et cetera, and review it. Understand the challenges that your local water is under. Understand what your city is doing overall about that. And uh, what kind of plan is in place to be able to bring you uh, better water overall? And you do that through educating and, and really taking a look at what's currently already available to you. But one of the big issues that you're not going to find through all of that is the infrastructure issues that are out there. And those are sometimes related to age and the type of water treatment applied or the age and the condition of the infrastructure between the water treatment facility and your tap. Any testing that's done at the water treatment facility is going to give you that report, but it's not addressing the piping that occurs from that location all the way to your home or to the park, et cetera, that your RV is parked in. So you really have to can understand how far away is that and uh, what age is that at? You may not know all the answers to all of those things, but you can actually make the assumption that it's very possible that there could be some contamination that comes along that, that path as well. Most of the time, these issues are, are out of your control. You can actually deal with these because you are actually going to be affected by them, which is why we say it's important to understand where and how your water is being treated, how far away is it being treated, and then take the necessary control to protect your water at the level that you do control which is at your home or your RV. And with proper filtration, you can avoid many, if not all, of the issues concerning your water. Now, as you're out traveling on the road, you're going to many different RV parks, and they may be getting their water from the city, so those types of reports are good for that area, and they may not. They may be uh, pulling that water from a well and treating it themselves uh, before it goes into your system. So, again, we really recommend for you to take control over the water that you're dealing with. And if you're putting it through a filtration system, get a good filtration system. And at least, you know, the quality of water is coming through is worth drinking. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So control what you can control. You can't control the your water source, basically, if you live in a city, you know, or even well water, but you can control what comes into your home or your RV and what you're drinking and, and using for cooking and so forth. So, Keith, I think we're just about out of time here, and I really appreciate you coming on the show today. You've answered a lot of good questions, and I think your company, Clear 2O, is really helping the RV air to come up with a better water solution. Your one micron systems just makes sense, you know, filtering out all that bad stuff and letting the good stuff through. And, you know, it's such an improvement on what's available. And I was looking at the price of your, your inline filter at $35. That's not out of line. That's a pretty good price for an inline filter. Um, that makes it very affordable to keep that water clean that's coming into your RV just on the inline system. So that's nice. You guys are doing a good job. And it actually will be cheaper than bottled water if you really calculate um, the cost of the water itself. Oh, yeah. Bottled water adds up no matter how cheap a bottled water you get. <laughs> and it's <laughs> right. a hassle, you know. It's where you get an extra bottle from. You know? <laughs> One less thing to worry about, that's for sure, especially when you're traveling. Who has time for all these uh, little incidental worries, you know? Okay, right. well, that's going to conclude our, our uh, interview here with Keith Bernard from Clear 2O. So I'm going to have a link to clear2o.com on, on my website, Radio Arizona RV. And I'm sure you can contact uh, Keith through his website with any type of questions questions you might have or you can always email me or give me a call like many of you do so keith again i want to thank you for being on the show today all right eric thanks very much and appreciate your time well, i want to thank keith again this is a great interview so thank you very much and i want to remind all of you to check out clear2o.com 
you know, excellent website and their products are great. They have good prices. So you want to look into that. And even if you don't go with clear2o.com, go with something, put a water filter in the system of your RV. But remember, Clear2O offers filters where you can actually turn that water into drinking water. So you don't have to buy bottled water anymore or not, maybe not as much of it. So check it out, clear2o.com. And again, this is Eric Stark with Radio Arizona RV. And I want to thank you all for listening today. I truly appreciate it. Check out the website, radioarizonarv.com. Um... Mm-hmm.